In this video, we are going to see how we can display data using WPF Data Grid and how we can customize columns for our needs. For that, let's create a simple WPF application. Let's name it Data Grid Example. Now we are going to create a simple person class which, which has only two properties name and surname. Now we want to create list of persons that is going to be, to be displayed uh, using data grid. I have created a list of persons that contains 10 persons. Now, displaying it using data grid is very simple. We're going to create our data grid. And what we're going to need is when we say my data grid item source equals to persons. Yeah, as you can see, uh, persons is displayed uh, as it as it is expected. So if the property is string, it is going to be automatically uh, displayed as, as text box and if let's say we have another field which is uh, boolean let's say we have this field is employee this is going to be displayed as as checkbox automatically so this is fine, but there are several problems with it. First of all, we might not want to show all the properties in data grid. Let's assume that this person has another field like an ID. There might be some others. We don't want to show all of them in data grid. So as you can see, everything is there. And so the second problem is that uh, column names automatically taken from property names which we might want to change for example we might not want to have surname we might want to have last name instead so let's see how we can do that so the first thing is we need to disable the column auto generation here's the property auto-generate columns which we need to set it to false but now our data grid is going to be just empty because we disabled column auto-generation so for so now we need to specify which columns we want to see so data grid columns and this is the default column when the property is string so we're gonna use that data grid text column now we can uh, specify the header of the column so it's gonna be name for us and then we can also have a last name but now so previously it would automatically bind to according property but now we need to specify that. So binding name and now binding surname. Yeah. 
So it shows only the properties that we mentioned. Besides being able to just show string and Boolean values, it is also possible to represent data as complex controls. Let's now assume that our person has another property, which is list of strings, and it is going to be languages known. Now let's add the fields. For, for each person. We can represent known languages now as combo boxes. For that, now we, we can't use just data grid text column, but instead we need to use data grid template column. And here again, we need to have a header, which is languages known and we need to add data grid cell template, data template. And here now we need to mention which control we want to see. Say combo box. Now item source equals to binding languages known. And also we want to, let's assume we want to select the default index to be zero. Let's see how it looks like now. Yeah, as you can see, now we have the languages known as combo boxes. Another example of custom controls might be the case when the object contains instance of another object. For example, if we have a class address and this address has street city and let's assume it also has a house number property and the person contains also address public address address get set and let's add address to each person address is added. Now in XAML we need to create another data grid template column. Header is going to be the address. Again cell template, data template. And here we can basically create for example stack panel to represent all the data. Let's say we have stack panel, orientation, uh, vertical, and we can have three text blocks uh, where text equals to binding. So basically it's going to be the address. Let's see what we have, address street. Address street, we have address city, and we have address house number. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah, as you can see, we have our cost custom data. The cell represents the, the whole address. And of course, we could create our own custom control uh, which would handle handle it instead of creating stack panel here. Let's do that quickly. For example, I could have uh, user control 
named address control. And this address control could have the same uh, the same stack panel instead. Annotation of vertical text block text equals to again binding, but this time we just have street. We are not having address street, but it's just a street city and house number and here instead of having this stack panel we can just have address control and we need to bind this data context equals to binding address Let's see how it looks like now. Yeah, it's exactly the same, but yeah, this is better solution because the address control can directly deal with uh, all, all address data. That's all. Hope you enjoyed the video.